collected. No more amazement. Tell your piteous heart there's no harm done. Oh, won't the day. No harm. <laughs> I've done nothing but in care of thee. Of thee, my dear one. Thee, my daughter, who art ignorant of what thou art. Not knowing of whence I am, nor that I am more better than Prospero, master of a full poor cell, and thy no greater father. More to know that that can meddle with my thoughts. Tis time I should inform thee, father. Lend thy hand and pluck my magic garment from thee. So, I there my heart. I thou thine eyes have comfort. The direful spectacle of the rack which touched the very virtue of compassion in thee. I have with such provision in mine art so safely ordered that there is no soul, no not so much perdition as a hair be tid to any creature in the vessel which thou heardst cry, which thou saw sink. Sit down, for thou must now know farther. You have often begun to tell me what I am. Thou hast now come, the very minute bids thee ope thine ear. Obey, and be attentive. Canst thou remember a time before we came unto this cell? I do not think thou canst, for then thou wast not out three years old. Certainly, sir, I can. By what? By any other house or person? Of anything the image, tell me, that hath kept with thy remembrance. Tis far off, and rather like a dream than an assurance that my remembrance warrants. Thou hast. And more, Miranda, how is it that this lives in thy mind? What seest thou else in the dark, backward, and a vision of time? If thou rememberest aught e'er thou camest here, how thou camest here thou mayest. But that I cannot. Twelve years since, Miranda, twelve years since, thy father was the Duke of Milan and a prince of power. mother was a piece of virtue. And she said that was my daughter, and thy father was Duke of Milan, and his only heir and princess no worse issue. Oh, my heavens. What kind of play had we that we came from thence, or bless what we did? Both, both, my girl. By foul play, as thou sayest, were we heaped thence. But blessedly, all hither. Oh, my heart bleeds to think of the team that I turned to. My sister, and thy false aunt, called Antonia. I pray thee, mark me that sister should be so perfidious. She who makes thyself of all the world I loved, and to her put the manage of my state. <coughs> As at that time, for all the sceneries, it was the first, and Prospero, the prime duke, being so reputed in dignity, and for the liberal arts without a parallel. Those being all my studies. The government I cast upon my sister, and to my state grew stranger, being transported and wrapped in secret studies. Thy false aunt, dost thou attend me? Sir, most heedfully. Being once perfected, how to grant suits, how to deny them, who to advance, and who to trash for overtopping, new created the creatures that were mine, I say, or change them, or else new form them having both the key of officer and office, set all the hearts of the state to what tune pleased her ear, that now she was the ivy which had hid my princely trunk and sucked my verger out of. Now it has not. What looks her I do? I pray thee, mark me. I thus neglecting worldly ends, all dedicated to closeness and the bettering of my mind, with that which but by being so retired overprised all popular aid, in my false sister wakes an evil nature. And my trust, like a good parent, did beget of her a falsehood in its contrary, as great as my trust was, which had indeed no limit, a confidence stands bound. She being thus lorded, not only with what my revenue yielded, but what my power might else exact, like one who, having into the truth by telling of it, made such a sinner of her memory to credit her own lie, she did believe she was indeed the duke. Out of the substitution and executing the outward face of royalty with all prerogative. Hence her ambition grown. Dost thou hear? Her tail, sir, with pure deafness. To have no screen between this part she played and him she played it for. The need will be absolute villain. Me, poor man, my library was due to large enough. Temporal royalty, she thinks me how incapable. Confederates, so dry she was for sway with the Queen of Naples. 
to give her annual tribute, do her homage, subject her coronet to her crown, and bend the dukedom yet unbound. Alas, poor oh, women, most ignoble, stupid. Oh, the heaven. <clears throat> Mark her condition and the event, and then say if this might be a sister. This queen of Naples, being an enemy to me inveterate, hearkens my sister's suit, which was that she, in lieu of the premises of homage, and I know not how much tribute, should presently extirpate me and mine out of the dukedom, and confer fair Milan with all its honors on my sister. Whereon a treacherous army levied, one midnight fated to the purpose, did Antonia open the gates of Milan, and in the dead of darkness, the ministers for the purpose hurry thence me and thy crying self. Oh, alas, for pity! I am not remembering how I cried out, then will cry it o'er again. It is a hint that brings my eye to it. Hear a little further, and then I'll bring thee to the present business which now is upon us, without the which this story were most impertinent. <laughs> Wherefore did they not that hour destroy us? Well demanded, wench. My tale provokes that question. Dear, they chose not, so dear the love my people bore me, nor set a mark so bloody on the business, but with colors fair painted their foul ends. In few, they heard us aboard a bark, bore us some leagues to sea, where they had prepared a rotten carcass of a butt, not rigged nor tackled, sail nor mast, the very rats instinctively acquitted. And there they hoist us, to cry to the sea that roared to us, to sigh to the winds, whose pity sighing back again did us but loving wrong. Oh, what trouble have I been to you? Oh, a cherubim thou was, that did preserve me. I did smile and fuse you with a fortitude from heaven, and I had decked the sea with drops full salt under my burdened groan which raised in me an undergoing stomach to bear up against what should ensue. How came we ashore? By providence divine, some food we had, some fresh water, did a noble Neapolitan, Gonzalo, out of paternity, who being then appointed master of this design, did give us, with rich garments, linen, stuffs, and necessaries which since have steaded much. So of her gentleness, knowing I loved my books, she furnished me from mine own library with volumes I prize above my dukedom. Would I might ever see that book? Now I arise, sit still and hear the last of our sea sorrow. Here in this island we arrived, and here am I, thy schoolmaster, made thee more profit than other princes can, that have more time for vainer hours and tutors not so careful. And now I pray you, sir, for still to speak in my mind. Your reason for raising the seashore? Know thus far forth. By accident most strange, bountiful fortune, now, my dear lady, hath my enemies brought to this shore, and by my prescience I find my zenith doth depend upon a most auspicious star, whose influence, if now I could not but omit, my fortunes will ever after droop. Here, cease more questions. Thou art inclined to sleep. Tis a good illness, and give it way. I know thou canst not choose. Come away, servant. I am ready now. Approach my area. Come. All hail, great master. Great sir, hail. I come to answer thy best pleasure. Be to fly, to swim, to dive into the fire, to ride on curled clouds, to thy strong bidding, to ask Ariel, and all its quality. Hast thou spirit performed to point the tempest that I bade thee? To every art. I boarded the king's ship, now on the leak, now on the waist, the deck, in every cabin I have slain in the basement. Sometimes I divide and burn in places. On the top mast, in the yards and the boats. 
was so firm, so constant, that this coil would not infect their reason. Not a soul that felt a fever of the mad in place of tricks and desperation. All but mariners plunged into the foamy grind of the Then, all afire with me, the queen sun pardoned at the peril scary, then like reeds, not hair, was the first man that left. Cry! How is that you know the devils are here? Why, that's my spirit, but was not this nice shore. Close by, my master. But are the areas safe? Not a hair perish. On their sustaining garments, not blemish, but fresher than before, and as thou bask me in troops, I have dispersed them about the isle. The queen's son run into by himself, when a cooling the air would sigh in an odd angle of the isle, and sitting his arms in this sad knot. Of the queen's ship, the mariners say how thou hast disposed, and all the rest of the fleet. Safely in harbor is the queen's ship in the deep nook, for once not called to me up at midnight to fetch the news from her. Still vexed for news. There she sits. The mariners all under hatches stowed, who the charm joined to their supper. I have left the sleep. Ariel, thy charge exactly is performed. But there's more work. What is the time of the day? Past the mid-season. At least two glasses. The time to six and now must by us both be spent most preciously. Is there more toil? Since thou dost give me pains, let me remember thee what thou hast promised, which is not yet performed me. How now? Moody, what is thou canst demand? My liberty. Before the time be had no more. I pray thee, remember I have done thee worthy service, told thee no lies, made thee no mistaking, served without or grudge or rumor. Thou didst promise to bait me a full year. Dost thou forget from what a torment I did free thee? No. Thou liest, malignant thing. Hast thou forgot the foul witch Sycorax? Who with age and envy was grown into a hoop? Hast thou forgot her? No, sir. Thou hast. Where was she born? Speak, tell me. Sir, of Argiers. So was she so. I must once in a month recount what thou hast been, which thou forgest. This damned witch cigarette, for mischiefs manifold and sorceries terrible to enter human hearing from Argiers, thou knowest was banished. For one thing she did, they would not take her life. Aye, sir. This blue-eyed hag was hither brought the child, and here was left by the sailors. Thou, my slave, as thou reports thyself, was then her servant. And for thou wast the spirit too delicate to act her earthy and abhorred commands, refusing her grand hest, she did confine thee by help of her more potent ministers in innermost unmitigable rage into a cloven pine within which rift imprisoned thou didst painfully remain a dozen years, within which space she died and left thee there, where thou didst vent thy groans as fast as mill will strike. Then was this island, save for the sun she did litter here, a freckled well had born, yes, uh, honored with a human shape. Yes, Caliban, her son. Dole thing I say so, he that Caliban, whom now I keep in service, thou best knowest, what torment I did find thee in. Thy groans did make wolves howl and penetrate the breast of ever angry bears. It was a torment to lay upon the damned, which cigarettes could not again undo. It was my not. When I arrived and heard thee, they made gape the pine and let thee out. I thank thee, master. If thou more murmurst, I will rend an oak and peg thee in its naughty entrails till thou hast howled away twelve winters. Pardon, master. I'll be correspondent to command and do my spirited gently. Do so, and after two days I will discharge thee. That's my noble master. What shall I do? Say what? What shall I do? Go make thyself like a nymph of the sea. Be subject to no sight but thine and mine, invisible to every eyeball else. Go, take the shape and hither come in. Go, hence with diligence.
who cannot listen, he does make our fire, fetch in our wood, and serves in offices that profit us. What ho! Slave! Caliban! Thou art not speak! There is wood enough within! Come forth, I say, there's other business for thee. Come now, Tortoise, when? Fine apparition, my quaint Ariel, how can I hear? My lord, it shall be done. Thou poisonous slave, come by the devil himself upon that wicked dam, come forth! This wicked dew is ere my mother brushed with raven's feather from unwholesome fin. Drop on you both! The southwest blow on ye and blister you all o'er. For this be sure, tonight thou shalt have cramps, side stitches that shall pen thy breath up. Urchin <coughs> shall for that vast of night that they may work all exercise on thee. That shall be pinched as thick as honeycombs, each pinch more stinging than bees that made them. I must eat my dinner. <laughs> this island's mine by cigarettes, my mother, which thou takest from me. When thou camest first, thou strokest me and made much of me, who would give me water with berries in it and teach me how to name the bigger light, and how the less that burn by day and night and in I loved thee, and showed thee all the qualities of the iron. Fresh springs, brine pits, barren place, unfertile. Cursed be I that did so. All the charms of Sycorax, toads, beetles, bats, light on you, for I am all the subjects that you have which was first mine own king. And here you sty me in this hard rock, both you do keep from me the rest of the island. Thou most lying slave, whom stripes may move, not kindness. I have used thee, built as thou art, with humane care, to lodge thee in mine own cell, till thou didst seek to violate the honor of my child. Oh, oh, what had been done that is prevent me? I had peopled else this isle with Caliban. A quiet slave, which any prince of goodness will not take, being capable of all ill. I pity thee, took pains to make thee speak, taught thee each hour one thing or other. When thou didst not, savage, know thine own meaning, but was gabbled on like a thing most British, I endowed thy words with purposes that made them known. But thy vile race, though thou didst learn, had in it which good natures could not abide with thee with. And therefore wast thou deservedly confined into this rock, whilst to guard more than a prison. You taught me language, and my profit on it is I know how to curse. The red flame rid you for learning me your language. Had she heads? Fetch us and fuel me quick. Thou art best to answer other business. Shrugst thou, mouth? If thou neglect'st or dost unwillingly what I command, I'll wrap thee with old cramps, <laughs> fill all thy bones with aches, <laughs> make thee roar, and beasts shall tremble at thy din. Uh, no! Pray thee, I must obey. His art is of such power it would control my dams, God sent to boast and make a vassal of him. So, slave, hence.
should this music be? In the air? Or earth? It sounds no more in shore and waits upon some god of the island. Sitting on the bank, weeping again, the queen, my mother, wrecked. This music crept by me upon the waters alive, both their fury and my passions with its sweet air. This I followed it, or it had drawn me, rather. But it's gone. No, <laughs> it begins again.
Thy weapon up, traitor, who makes a show but dares not strike. Thy conscience is so possessed with guilt. Come from thy ward, for I can hear it only with this stick and make thy weapon draw. But hate you, Hence, hang not on my garments. Sir, have pity, I'll be a shorty. Silence! What word more shall make me chide thee if not hate thee? Advocate for an imposter? Hush. I think there are no more such shapes as he, having seen but him and Caliban. Foolish wench. To most of men, this is a Caliban, and they to him are angels. My affections are then most humbled. I have no ambition to see a goodlier man. Come on. Uh, uh, Obey! Thy nerves are in their infancy again, and have no vigor in them. So they are. <coughs> My feelings as in a dream are all bound up. My mother's loss, the weakness which I feel, the wreck of all my friends, nor this man's threats to whom I am subdued, are but light to me. Might I but through my prison once a day behold this maid, that all corners else the world that liberty make us of. Space enough have I in such a prison. It works. Come on, <laughs> thou hast done well, fine Ariel. <coughs> Follow me. Harcourt, thou shalt do me. Be of comfort. My father's of a better nature, sir, than to appear to have feet. This is unwanted which now came from him. Thou shalt be as free as mountain winds, but then exactly do all points of my command. To the syllable. Come, follow, speak not your forum. <laughs>
for the peace. You were kneeled to and important otherwise by all of us. And the fair soul herself weighed between lowness and obedience at which end of the beach you go. We have lost your son, I fear, forever. But the faults you're out, so to the dearest of the law. Lady Sebastian! The truth you speak doth lack some gentleness and time to speak it in. You rub the sore when you should bring the plaster. Very well. <laughs>
which now she's like who? That's dead. Whom I with this obedience steal. Five inches of it could lay to bed forever. Thy case, dear friend, shall be my precedent. As thou dost mill and I'll come by Naples. Draw thy gun. One shot shall free thee from the tribute which thou pay payest, and my queen shall love thee. Draw together! And when I fire my gun, do you the like to fire it on Gonzalo? Oh, the one word! <sighs> my master, see through his art, foresees the danger that you, his friend, are in, and sends me forth or else's project guides to keep them living. While you here do snoring lie, open eyed conspiracy, his time don't take. If of life you keep a care, shake off slumber and beware. Awake! Awake! Then let us both be sudden. <laughs> Two 
and instruct thee how to snare the nimble marwood set. Oh. I'll bring thee to clustering filberts, and sometimes will I get thee young scammels from the rock. <laughs> Wilt thou go with me? Some kinds of 
this are nobly undergone, and most poor matters point to rich ends. <clears throat> this my mean task would be as heavy to me as odious, but the mistress which I serve quickens what's dead and makes my labors pleasures. <sighs> oh, she is ten times more gentle than her father's craft, and he is composed of harshness. I must remove some thousands of these logs and pile them up upon a sore injunction. My sweet mistress weeps when she sees me work and says such baseness and never like executor. I forget, but these sweet thoughts do even refresh my labors. Most busiest when I do it. Dear mistress, the sun will set before I discharge what I must strive to do. If you'll sit it down, I'll spare your lost while. Pray, give me that. I'll carry it to the pile. No, precious creature, I'd rather crack my seat and break my back than you such dishonor undergo a high and lazy body. <laughs> it would become me as well as it does you, and I would do it with much more ease, for my goodwill is to it and yours is it against. Oh, worm, thou art infected. This visitation shows it. Oh no, tis fresh morning with me while you are by at night. I will seek you, chiefly, so I may put it in my prayers. What is your name? Miranda. Oh, oh my father, I have broke your hest to say so. In my Miranda, indeed the top of admiration worth what's nearest to the world. Full many a lady, I have eyed with best regard and many a time the harmony of their tongue hath brought the bondage to my village ear. For several virtues I have had several women. Never any with so full soul, but some defect in her did quarrel with the noblest grace she owned, and put it to the foe. But you, oh, you, so perfect and so peerless, are created of every creature's best. I'm about one of my sex. No one's face remembers face in my glass, my nose. Nor have I seen more than ever. Nothing can be more. Out to my book. 
For yet ere supper time must I perform much business appertaining. Thank <laughs> you. 
sleep again. And in dreaming, we thought the clouds would open and show riches ready to drop upon me. That when I waked, I cried to dream again. The sort of a breaking into me, where I shall have my music for nothing. When Prospero is destroyed. That shall be by and by. I remember the story. Oh, the time is going away. Let's follow it. Monster will follow. I thought I should see this musician. He lays it on. Well, what's wrong? I'll follow, Stephanie. <laughs> How do you like it, man? I can go no farther. My weary bones do ache. For your patience, I needs must rest me. I cannot blame thee who am myself attached with weariness and dwelling of my spirit. Sit down and rest. Even here will I cross my hope and keep it no longer for my flatter. He comes round, and thus we stray to find, and the sea mocks our prostrate search on land. Well, let him go. I am right glad that she still out of hope. Do not for one second repulse to forego the purpose that he resolved to effect. The next advantage we will take her. But let it be tonight, when they are pressed with travail. For they will not nor cannot use such vigilance as when they are fresh. I say tonight, no more. What harmony is this? My good friend's heart, marvelous sweet music. <laughs> you must cry keepers to this. What are these? A living story. Now I will believe that there are unicorns. <laughs> that in Arabia there is one tree of Phoenix throne, one Phoenix in this hour reigning there. I believe both. <laughs>
too austerely punished you, your compensation makes amends. For I've given you here a third of my known life, or that for which I live. But once again I tended to thy hand. All thy vexations were but my trials of thy love, and thou hast strangely stood the test. Here, afore heaven, I ratify this, my rich gift. O oh, Ferdinand, do not smile at me that I boast her of, but thou shalt find she will outstrip all praise and make it halt behind her. I do believe it. I guess an oracle. Yet as my guest, and thy own acquisition worthily purchased, take my daughter. But thou dost break her virgin knot, before all sanctimonious ceremonies may with full and holy rite be ministered. No sweet aspersions shall the heavens let fall to make this contract grow. With barren hate, sour eyed disdain and discord shall bestrew the union of your bed with weeds so loathly that you shall hate it both. Therefore, take heed, as Hyman's lamp shall light. As I hope for quiet days, fair issue, and long life, with such love as tis now, the murkiest then, the most optimum place, the strongest suggestion, our worser genius can shall never melt my honor into lust to take away the edge of that day's celebration, or I shall think or Phoebus steeds are founded and night kept chain below. Fairly spoke. Sit then and talk with her. <coughs> she is. I know. What Ariel, my industrious servant Ariel? What would my good master? Here I am. Thou and thy meter fellows, your last service did worthily perform, and I must use you in such another trick. Go bring the rabble over whom I give thee power here to this place, and cite them to quick motion. For I must bestow upon the eyes of this young couple some vanity of mine art. It is my promise, and they expect it from me. Presently. Aye, with a twink. Before you can say, come and go, and breathe twice and cry, so, so, each one tripping on his toe will be here with love and love. Do you love me, Nestor? No. Dearly, delicate Ariel, do not approach till thou dost hear me call. Well. Look thou, be true, do not give dalliance too much the rain. The strongest oaths are straw to the fire of the blood. Be more abstemious, or else good night your vow. I warrant you, sir, the white cold virgin snow upon my heart abates the ardor of my liver. Well, now come my Ariel, appear and pertly. No tongue, all eyes, be silent. A contract of true love to celebrate, and some donation. Thank you. 
it that works him strongly. Never till this day saw I hear touch with anger so distemper. You do look, my son, in a moving sort, as if you were dismayed. Be cheerful, sir. Our revels now are ended, and these are actors, as I foretold you, were all spirits, and are melted into air, into thin air. And like the baseless fabric of this vision, the cloud capped towers, the gorgeous palaces, the solemn temples, the great globe itself, ye all which it inherits shall dissolve. And like this insubstantial pageant faded, leave not a rack behind. We are such stuff as dreams are made of, and our little life is rounded. Sir, I am vexed. My whole brain is troubled. Be not disturbed with my infirmity. If you be pleased, retire into my cell and there repose. Uh, turn into a walk to still my beating mind. We, we wish you peace. Come with a thought. I thank thee, Ariel. Come. Thy thoughts I plead to you. What's thy pleasure? Spirit, we must prepare to meet with Caliban. I thought to have told thee of it, but I feared lest I might anger thee. Say again, where didst thou lead me, Barnabas? I told thee, sir, they were red hot with drinking. So one about that they smoked the air for breathing in their faces, beat the ground for kissing of their feet, yet always bending toward their bodies. Then I beat my tabor, which like unbacked cults, they tripped their ears, advanced their eyes, lifted their noses as they so I charmed their ears that half like they my woman falls. Tooth briars, sharp furses, breaking doors, the dorms, the edge of their branches. At last, I left them in the filthy nets of coal beyond your cell. They are dancing up to the chins as a fowl lay lower stuck their feet. This was well done, my bird. Thy shape invisible retain thou still. The trumpery, my house, go bring it hither for stale to catch these thieves. A devil, a born devil, on whose nature nurture can never stay, on whom my pains humanely take it. All, all lost, quite lost, and as with age his body uglier grows.
coat of brown with black skin with pinches make a strange style. Be quiet, monster. Mr. Swan, it's not just my jerkin. A monster, come, put the fly upon your fingers and away with the rest. You are not to turn us the barnacles of apes with foreheads filling the slow. Monster, lay to your fingers. Help to bear this away where my hawks and a blind is, or I'll turn you out of my kingdom. Uh, Go to. Carry this. Oh, and this.
buried certain fathoms in the earth and deeper than did ever plummet sound. I'll drown in my book. A solemn air and the best comforted to an unsettled fancy cure thy brains now useless, boiled within thy skull. There stand, for you are spell stopped. Holy Gonzala, honorable prince. Mine eyes, the insociable to the show of time, fall fellowly dropped. The charm dissolves apace, and as the morning steals upon the night, melting the darkness, so their rising senses begin to chase the ignorant fiends that now mantle their clear reason. Oh, holy Gonzalo, my true preserver, and loyal one to her thou followest, I will pay thy graces home both in word and most cruelly didst thou, Alonzo, use me and my daughter. Thy sister was a further in the act. Thou art pinched for it now, Sebastian. Flesh and blood, you, sister mine, that entertain ambition, expel remorse and nature, whom with Sebastian, whose inward pinches are therefore most strong, would here have killed your queen. tide will shortly fill the reasonable shore that now mantles their clear reason. Ariel, I will disguise me and myself present as I was sometime villain. Quickly, spirit, thou shalt ere long be free. Why, that's my dainty Ariel. Thou shalt have freedom. Invisible as thou art, there thou shalt find the mariners asleep under the hatches. The master and the boatswain, being awake, can force them to this place, and presently I prithee. I drink the air before me, return or air thy pulse twice. All torment, double wonder and amazement in heaven here. Some heavenly power guide us out of this fearful country. Behold! Fair queen, the wronged duke of Milan, Prospero, and for more assurance that a living prince does now speak to thee, I embrace thy body, and to thee and thy company, I bid a hearty welcome. Whether thou beest he or no, or some enchanted trifle to abuse me as late I have been, I not know. Thy pulse beats as a flesh and blood. And since I saw thee, the affliction of my mind commanded, with which I fear a madness help me. This must crave, and if this be at all, a most strange story. Thy dukedom I resign, and do entreat thou pardon me my wrongs. How should Prospero be living and be here? First, noble friend, let me embrace thine age, whose honor cannot be measured or confined. Whether this be or be not, I'll not swear. You do yet taste some subtleties in the aisle that will not let you believe things certain. Welcome, friends, all. But you, my brace of lords, were I so minded, I ne'er could pluck her highness's frown upon you and justify you traitors. At this time, I will tell no tales. The devil speaks in him. No. For you, most whom to call sister would even infect my mouth. <clears throat> I do forgive thy rankest faults, all of them, and require my duty <coughs> of thee, which perforce I know thou must restore.
Wellington. You look like loss. As great to me as late. It's supportable to make the dear loss. Have I means much weaker than you may call to comfort you? For I have lost my daughter. Daughter. Oh, heavens, that they were living both in Naples, the king and queen there. That they were, I wish myself were mother than that oozy bed where my son lies. When did you lose your daughter? In this last I perceive these lords at this encounter do so much admire that they devour their reason. Scarce think their eyes do offices of truth. Their words are natural breath. But howsoe'er you have been jostled from your senses, know for certain that I am Prospero, and that very duke which was thrust forth a villain the most strangely upon this shore where you are at, was landed to be the Lord on. No more yet of this. This is a chronicle of day by day, not a relation for a breakfast, nor befitting this first meeting. Welcome, queen. This sells my court. Here have I few attendants and subjects none abroad. Pray, look in. My dukedom, since you have given me again, I will requite you with this good a thing. At least bring forth a wonder to content ye as much as me, my dukedom. Sweet lord, you play me false. Now, my dear brother, would not for the world. Yes, for a score of kings of you should wrangle, and I would call it fair play. If this prove a vision of the island, one dear son shall I quite lose. A most high miracle. Though the seas threaten me are merciful, I have cursed them upon cause. Now all the blessings of the glad mother compass thee about. Arise and say how thou canst hear. Oh, wonder, how many goodly creatures there are here. How beauteous mankind is. Oh, brave new world, that has such people in it. Tis new to thee. <laughs> what is this maid with whom thou wilt still play? Your eldest acquaintance with her cannot be three hours. Is she the boss that has severed us and brought us up together? Ma'am, she is mortal, and by a mortal providence she is mine. I chose her when I could not ask my mother for her advice, nor thought I had one. She is dumped into this famous Duke of Millen. Of whom so often I've heard renown but never saw before. <coughs> of whom I received a second life and a second father. This lady makes him to me. I am hers. But oh, how oddly will it sound I must ask my child's forgiveness. There, Queen, stop. Let us not burden our remembrances with a heaviness that's gone. I have in me left and would have spoken ere this. Look down, you gods, upon this couple and draw a blessed crown. For it is you that have chopped forth the way which brought us hither. I say amen, Gonzalo. Was Millen thrust from Millen that his issue should become kings of Naples? Oh, rejoice beyond common joy and set it down in gold and lasting pillars. For in one voyage did Clarabelle her husband find at Tunis, and her brother, Ferdinand. A wife, where he himself was lost, Prospero his dukedom in a poor isle, and all of us ourselves, when no man was his own. Give me your hand. Like grief and sorrow still embrace his heart that doth not wish you joy. Be it so. Amen. Look, queen, look, man. Our ship was but three glasses since we gained us. 
ways has ever been taught, and there is in this business more than nature was ever conduct of. Some oracle must rectify our knowledge. Queen, my liege, do not invest your mind with beating on the strangeness of this business. At pick leisure, which shall be shortly single, I'll resolve you, which to you shall seem probable, of every of these happen accidents. Tell when be cheerful, and think of each thing well. Go thither, spirit, set Caliban and his companions free, untie the spell. How fares, my gracious queen? There are yet missing from your company some few odd lads that you remember not. Every man should for all the rest, and let no man take care for himself, for all is but fortune. Could these be two spies which I heard my head? Here's a goofy sight. Oh, set to boast, these be brave spirits. I'll find my master is. I am afraid I will be chastised. <laughs>
but release me from my bands with the help of your good hands. Gentle breath of yours, my sails must fill, or else my project fails, which was to please. Now I want spirits to enforce, art to enchant, and my ending is despair, unless I be relieved by prayer, which pierces so that insults mercy itself and frees all faults. As you from crimes would 